Hello everybody, it's Fu here, bringing you week two of the WBE Let's Go League. And this week I'll be going up against Mewtwo Fan Nate and the New York Noibats. This week I'll also be trying a live narration, so we'll see how this goes. I haven't done one of these in a quick minute, so <laughs> if the quality is awful, I apologise for that. I'm also a little bit ill, so if my voice sounds weird, that is why. So before we get into the battle, um, we've got a little bit of time while Nate prepares his team, so I'll just take you through the matchup and then my team as well. I'll try to leave a timestamp in the comment section for you to skip to the battle if you're only interested in that. So let's go through the team and first off Mega Aerodactyl is uh, looking pretty good as it will do most weeks to maybe clean out the match but before it can do that um, the Noibats have some really big threats so they've got Mega Slowbro that's really bulky and really strong I don't have too many switches on that Psychic types in general are a bit of a problem so that's something I have to bear in mind. Sandslash can take Aerodactyl on well as well, so I need to watch out for that. And then in terms of offensive threats, uh, Venomoth is really the main one that I have to look out for there. Because though I have a number of things that could potentially deal with it, Bug Buzz and Psychic does do a number to my team. And if things get whittled and something gets put to sleep, then I could be in for a bit of a problem. So bearing that in mind, let's go through the sets that I'm bringing. So, as I said, Mega Aerodactyl's looking good. We've got the Rock Slide and Earthquake, which deal with pretty much all of the team. Crunch is just there to deal a little bit more damage to Mega Slowbro, but it was kind of a free slot. So, I'm not really sure if Crunch was the best thing to put there, but that's what's ended up there. And then Roost, to try and keep myself healthy, I decided not to have this as my Stealth Rocker, because I didn't want to have to bring it in too many times early game. Um, this thing, Nidoking, is going to be my Stealth Rocker. Really important because I do want to get that damage on Venomoth as well as any chip damage I can get on Mega Slowbro because I really need to chip that down before I can clean up. Um, we've got Ice Beam there for the Sand Slash, basically. That's the only, really, the only thing that will hit harder than Earthquake. Um, and then also Thunderbolt to do a little bit more damage to Mega Slowbro again um, and Stealth Rock as I said. Then we've got Snorlax's debut. Um, this thing is my switch into Mega Slowbro, which is a massive problem. But this guy can eat some hits pretty well. Um, we've got Facade on there in case I get a Scold Burn, but I think Psychic Spamming is probably more likely. So that's really just wish wishful thinking, but Toxic Protect is the way to whistle down Slowbro to put it in range of Aerodactyl. And also Seismic Toss does a good number two. I think um, Seismic Toss does like, just it's just under a three hit KO, but with Toxic, hopefully that'll be a three hit KO, quite an easy three hit KO. Um, and I think we'll be able to survive long enough to see that through. Um, and then we've also got Poliwath here. Now Poliwath's main job is to um, look out for the Alolan Raticate because I can take that out and I would expect Alolan Raticate to maybe be adamant because it's got the Sucker Punch priority so it doesn't need to be as fast. So that's why I've gone Jolly to try and outspeed it. Brick Break will be an Oko. Brick Break also over Superpower because just in case he does bring any screens, I think that might be a nice tech. And then Waterfall is there for extra... Um, ways to hit things like Sand Slash, Venomoth, it's just an, my other stab move. And then Toxic, I definitely want that because Mega Slowbro is like the easiest switching on this guy. So if I can do a Toxic and a Protect, then switch into my Snorlax and then Protect again, we're going to be whistling that uh, Toxic damage really well. So that's my way of whistling down Mega Slowbro. Um, and then I think, no, this is my penultimate. So we bring in Kabutops. I was umming and ahhing about this spot. I was thinking maybe Kadabra as well because it's quite fast and does some decent damage to the opponent's team. But generally there are switch-ins and I'd have to predict quite hard. And he still has things that outspeed it. And I just didn't think that it added as much value as Kabutops. Um, which with Waterfall and Leech Life it hits everything pretty hard. Mega Slowbro doesn't take too much from Leech Life but it's there just in case. Um, we've got the Swords Dance. I'm not actually expecting to be able to set up, but if I can, that will be great. I don't think I'll sweep with this guy, um, but Aqua Jet really is there for putting things faster than this guy in range of my Aerodactyl. And I just thought that generally it was a better bring than Kadabra because it can live a hit and then do a waterfall Aqua Jet combo. Um, let's see how that works out. I do like Cabo Tops, but I'm just a bit concerned, but I think it'll be okay. And then finally, we've got Venusaur. Obviously, I said Mega Slowbro and Sand Slash are the big problems for my Aerodactyl. This thing does a lot of damage to both of them. Sleep Powder will be really nice if I can take something out of the game. 
Um, and double edge, this isn't a mistake this week. I did bring one by mistake last week, but this week it is purposeful. I really need something to be able to hit the venom off because if that thing comes in and sets up a sub, I'm not in a good position. Um, double edge after rocks, I think it has a good chance to two hit KO. Um, and generally, yeah, I think that this is a decent way of preventing Venomoth from being such a massive threat. Um, luckily, Aero does outspeed Venom uh, Modest Venomoth at plus one, and actually it can take plus two hits relatively easily from Venomoth 2. The best thing it would have to hit my Aerodactyl, I think, is Psychic, so it's not going to be doing too much. Um, so that's good, but I just need to preserve the health because Aero is my win condition, so other things need to be able to take on the Venomoth too. So that's where we are with that, and I think we'll be ready to start the battle in just a second. Okay, so uh, we've set up the battle now. There were a few connection pro uh, problems initially, but hopefully that's not a sign of things to, go to come. So yeah, let's get into this battle. Uh, how I'm feeling about this one is, I, I feel all right about it, because Aero does have a really good matchup, but I am leaning on Aero quite a lot, and what I am concerned about is that Venomoth and being able to take it out without having to use my Aerodactyl, because if it's got, like, Stun Spore, um, then that could be a problem. Right, now we can check the opponent's team, see what he's brought. He brought the um, Graveler, which actually, I, sh I, uh, I think I, over I overlooked something. I should have put Surf on my Nidor King, which I didn't, which is really annoying. Um, but other than that, very, very happy to see that Venomoth is not there. So, um... Looking at potential leads, he might lead out with Mr. Mime, um, but either way... Oh, he's brought the Fero, which is interesting as well. Um, either way, ah, I'd like to lead off with my Venusaur, I think. Uh, Mr. Mime would be a slightly strange lead, because uh, I could lead off with Aerodactyl and it does a ton of damage and Mr. Mime cannot kill Aerodactyl, but it could have the T-Wave or something. So I'm just going to lock in uh, with my Venusaur first because I'm kind of predicting maybe early rocks. Um, his Graveler takes on both my Stealth Rockers. Well, actually, I've got three potential Stealth Rockers here and it doesn't take on Cabbage Tops very well. But I don't think he would lead with anything other than, like, well... He could lead with a number of things, actually. He could U-turn with Fero, and if he leads with Fero here, that puts me in a not great position, but my Aero can actually easily switch in on Fero, and now I don't and now I don't have to deal with... Um... Okay, so he leads with the Slowbro. I actually kind of want to preserve my Venusaur. He may well switch out himself, but if he's switching out uh, on a Venusaur, who would he go into? Maybe Fero? Uh... He doesn't have great switchings on Venusaur, which is why I don't want to stay in, because his Psychic does way too much, and my Giga Drain, uh, Mega Drain definitely doesn't take him out. So I think that going into um, Snorlax here is not a bad play, because he's most likely going to switch into his Mr. Mime, if anything, and this is my Mr. Mime switch in too, so I think that's what I'm going to do. But he could well stay in, knowing that he can take one hit and go for a massive Psychic but Psychic does nothing to harm Brave. Uh, so he's actually withdrawing too. So I did predict his lead, um, but it's just interesting to see how he plays around with this. So he does actually go into his Fero. Um, I'm not I'm not keen on staying in on the Fero. I think I'd like to go into my Aerodactyl, but he's likely just going to U-turn. I mean, very likely going to U-turn. Uh, no, I need, I, need H I need HP on this. So I think, or I could go into my Nidoking here, but it would give him a free switch into whatever he wanted. So I think going into my arrow is fine, because he'll U-turn, probably go back into his um, Slowbro, and then I can easily switch back into my uh, Snorlax on that. So yeah, the U-turn does come out, which is fine. I do have Roost on this, so in terms of worrying about uh, rock switch-ins, that's fine. He might actually go into Graveler here, which is, is fine with me because I've got a much easier switch on that. I can go straight back into my Venusaur um, and put something to sleep is probably the best play there. So he goes, he does go, actually go into the Slowbro. I don't have as good switch-ins on Slowbro. He might actually just go for a Teleport here, um, but that's fine. We'll go back into this. If he gets his rocks up, then that will be very good for him. So... 
Yeah, I really want my rocks because it looks like he's gone for like um, a momentum team. Pretty much almost everything I think on his team gets momentum. Oh no, Raichu doesn't get teleport. I thought Raichu might, but um, Mr. Mime gets teleport. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a teleport here or just a psychic or a scold. Maybe a scold. A scold would be good because we have the facade. So a toxic comes out. Um, I'm I'm tempted just to fire off a facade right now because it's going to do a decent amount of damage. Um, I think it does what about 40 to this thing? Uh, no, it doesn't. It does about 32. But he can't really switch in very well on it. I could go for a toxic myself. Uh, or predict a switch. Because uh, I think he might go into... I, I kind of don't want to because he might try to 1v1 me. And so I'm just going to go for a facade here just to get some damage on this if he wants to stay in. It, the, uh, the issue was that I, yeah, I thought that this switch might be coming. But the issue is that I... Um, his other player... Oh my god! That was a crit. Wow, that did so much. I think that's actually put... Graveler in range of my Mega Aerodactyl, so that's kind of crazy. Um, we need to switch here into my Venusaur, as he's going to get up rocks, which is fine, um, but Venusaur is a really big threat to his team, so I'm okay going Venusaur here. He might even sack his Graveler at this stage, because, yeah, it goes down to my Earthquake for, on my Aerodactyl, which is really good. Yeah, so he's going Stealth Rock. Um, that's okay. And I think I would just go for a Giga Drain here. No, I go for a Sleep Powder here. Yeah, 100% go for a Sleep Powder. 100%. Because that, um, if I can put his Fero to sleep, that's great. He might try to burn a Sleep Turn. Um, and on on this Fero, if, if I manage to hit the Sleep Powder, I'm definitely 100% going into my Nidoking to get my own rocks. Because then um, we're in a much better position. So I'm still really concerned about that slow bro, but while I have my Venusaur around, it's much better. Okay, so he actually um, opts to put this thing to sleep, and now he's likely going to switch out, I think, into his Fero. Um, which I, I think is my opportunity to get up rocks. I know that he may well have Drill Run, but... I do think, like, he's not going to switch into his, um, he's definitely 100% not switching in to his Slowbro on this. So I think Firo is probably coming out here, but I need to get my rocks up. That was a really good play by him, um, maybe sacking it, and, as, and it would have been a decent sack there, because it would mean that, um, because I can take it out with Arrow anyway, there's pretty much nothing that it can take a hit from at this stage. I'm surprised that he brought this instead of his sand slash though because it's sand slash is much better at dealing with my aerodactyl this thing's weak to earthquake and is already in range of my aerodactyl so anyway um we're bringing out my nido king here as he's withdrawing and going into yeah his big bird so i'm actually not sure if this thing gets taunt and um, either way i'm gonna try to get up my rocks I know that it gets Drill Run, and that's going to do a lot of damage, but it's not going to take me out. But either way, Nidoking is definitely my most expendable member right now, um, and I don't really mind getting all of this damage on it. If he gets a crit, that will be bad. But we can take that hit. Um, it looks like a two-hit KO from there. I think what will happen here is we might see a U-turn as he predicts my um, Aerodactyl. Now, do I need this for anything specific? Let's have a look at his team again. Do I need this? Ah, I, I want it for his Raichu, but I also have my Venusaur. But I do kind of want this for my Raichu, but I'm really thinking he's going to go for a U-turn here. Really, really thinking he might go for a U-turn. So I'm actually going to predict that and just go for a Thunderbolt. Um, I really think he's going to go for the U-turn. Yeah, he went for the U-turn, and most likely he's... He, if he goes into Slowbro, that will be amazing. Um, I, I really don't think that he'll be going into Mr. Mime, unless he just wants to sack it. He could well go into his Graveler here, actually, which I think is a bad play. I've got the Ice Beam, so Ice Beam is my best, way, the best um, move to click here, because if he goes into 
Firo scouting for anything like, um, if, yeah, if he goes into Firo scouting for anything like Earthquake, I would have caught that too. But we can just take out Armstrong, uh, and then I can put something else to sleep, which is really good. So, in all of that, that was an, that was an alright turn of events, I think. We've got the rocks now, so that Firo is a lot less of an issue. Um, the U-turn is annoying and it will be forcing out my Venusaur, which is one of the biggest threats to his team. But I kind of want to keep this thing around, if I can, just as an electric immunity. Raichu is still there, so if I can keep this for Raichu that would be good. Uh, but I still have my Venusaur. Raichu is 100% okoed by uh, Aerodactyl. So, we've got Mr. Mime coming out right now. And I do feel like preserving this. Um, I feel like... Do I... Should I keep... Should I keep more health on... I mean, I do. I actually do more damage to Slowbro with my Nidoking. So... Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to just switch into Humbro because now he has no switch-ins to Facade. Facade does so much to everything. But if this thing is sub, then I've just made a bit of a mistake. I think he's unlikely to go for sub here, though. He does! Ah! Uh, okay. So, it's a little bit of an issue. I think he's actually, he might be able to 1v1 my Snorlax. But what this means is that um, I can then get in my Aerodactyl and click Crunch. By the time that he's taken out my Snorlax, the uh, Mr. Mime will definitely be in range of Crunch. And if he switches out to anything, I think I can take it out with my follow-up move. Um, so that's good. So Psychic's not going to be doing much. But I imagine he'll sub down. Yeah, Psychic doesn't do much, um, but he will be subbing down. He does get the special defense drop, so that's going to hasten this process. Um, but yeah, how much is my error doing to Mr. Mime? I think it does a lot. I think after this, um, Earthquake might be my best move to click. So he will go for the substitute again. I just need to make sure that he doesn't have a substitute after all of this. It does mean that... Uh, his Slowbro is going to be a much bigger threat, but I still have lots of things that can do a lot of damage to his Slowbro. So that's good. Um, but I, I should have seen that coming. I should have gone for an Earthquake with my Nidoking. I really should have done that because um, at that stage, Nidoking... Hmm, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I've got loads of stuff that can deal damage to the uh, Slowbro, and this thing, I actually have fewer things that can switch in on it. It's just I can revenge it very easily with my Aerodactyl. So he's probably going to go for the Psychic here, but there's absolutely no point in me going for uh, any switches, because I just don't have switch-ins to Psychic. It's a very, very scary move for me. So if I... Yeah, it, I think what I do here is go into my Aerodactyl and click Crunch, because I'm pretty sure that Crunch will take out Mr. Mime from there. Um, and... Uh, or should I click Earthquake just to be even more sure? How much are we... We're doing alright for HP on Terence here. So let's Mega Evolve, click Crunch. With Rocks and Crunch damage, the Slowbro will be taking a lot of damage. I think at this stage, what my play will be on the Slowbro is maybe just straight into um, Kabutops as a sack because it's really not that useful. I really hope that I've helped this right and that Crunch takes the Mr. Mime out because if it doesn't, I, I basically lose. <laughs> so I really hope that this takes it out. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it does. Good. So he sacked the Mr. Mime. I think that his Mr. Mime did its job. I think what it was meant to do was basically just get uh, get rid of my Snorlax once it had been toxic. So that was quite good prep on his part. So yeah, the Slowbro comes in now. At least it's starting to take some chip damage. And um, here I do think that I just switch into my Kabu Tops. Because if I can get 40% on it with my Thunderbolt from Nidoking, that will be really, really good. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. I don't even know if I take a hit. I don't think I take a hit, but it depends what kind of a move he's going for. I think he'll just go for Psychic. There's absolutely no reason to go for anything other than Psychic. Um, and if I can take that, then that would be great. But I'm not actually not sure if I'm going to take it. I should be able to take one, surely. Yeah. Okay, so right now we just go for a Leech Life, which won't be doing much damage, 
but it's just all chip, it's all chip. We've shown the crunch, he probably wants to make sure that he doesn't take too much damage on his slow bro. But what's good about this is, after my uh, leech life damage, then I'll be pretty, looking pretty good to be able to take it out with um, things like my Nidra King. Or actually, I think after leech life it may well be in Giga Drain range. It depends though. But yeah, this was meant as a sag. Uh, looking at his remaining team, I guess Firo could come in, but it's taking rocks and then I've also got the Aqua Jet to follow up. So we'll see. He might fear the Mega Drain. He might fear the Mega Drain, which would be hilarious, but uh, Leech Life was still doing more damage just because I'm adamant I have a lot of attack. He's actually switching, which is interesting. So Laxus comes out, please be the Raticate. Okay, this this should take a lot of damage. And after an Aqua Jet, I mean, I get a lot of HP back as well. He could just go for the Thunderbolt. Um, right now I'm thinking I go for Aqua Jet because two Aqua Jets will take it out. Um, and this is, a, like, I went into this sort of as a sag. I wanted to get a bit more damage on um, the slow bro, but once this goes down, I get to go into my Nidder King and probably cl click Thunderbolt or maybe maybe just Earthquake. It's hard though because he's no, actually, I probably should go into my Aero and click Crunch again because we'd we'd then really be pressuring his. Uh... Okay, so let's see what he goes for. Oh my God, was that crit? No, what? That, I didn't expect it to take it out. So that's really good for me now because I get to do like an Aqua Jet on something or, or yeah, this is really good. If he goes, the only thing is if he goes into his Raticate, I go straight into my, um, oh, he goes into this. So he's letting me get Aqua Jet damage on this, but I don't really need Aqua Jet damage on this. Um, and the fact that he's just going for a drill run kind of makes me want to go into my, um, yeah, my arrow and roost, but that could be a really, really, that's a risky play because if he goes for a U-turn, um, then I've just taken 25% on my Aerodactyl for nothing. But I do think that he will, uh, it's hard. Or should I just sack? Should I just sack? Should I just sack? I think I just sack. Um, and I, as I say, I don't need, yeah, he went for drill run. Oh my God, he missed the drill run. Holy crap, that's really bad news and I'm really sorry Nate because that puts him like majorly on the back foot. If he switch, I can go for Aqua Jet safely now because if he switches out, um, Big Bird goes down. So <laughs> Kabutops putting in so much work considering as I thought it might be a sack. Um, I'm really sorry about that miss, Nate. Uh, this puts me in a really good position right now because Slowbro may well have to take this Leech Life hit. It doesn't actually do that much damage. He would have been uh, much better staying in. But I say that, but Slowbro is 100% his most important Pokemon because it takes on so many things on my team. At this stage, um, it will have to take on too many things, I think. Um, he, his only win condition here is Alolan Raticate going for a Sword Stance. But I think because I've still got my full HP Jolly Poliwrath, which could well outspeed his Raticate, I think I'm in um, a good position. Right now, there's absolutely no reason for me to go for anything other than Leech Life, because uh, I should I could go straight into I could go straight into my Poliwrath. I don't think he takes me out with anything. I've got really good defense. That won't take me out, and then Leech Life is going to give me so much health back. Wow. That's an Oko. I didn't know it did that much damage. Oh my god. I'm so sorry about all of the crits and everything. I've got two crits. I mean, after that, my Aqua Jet takes him out, um, but it just meant that I get more recovery, or he could potentially switch into his Slowbro, but that wouldn't have made much sense as a play because, yeah, but he, he didn't... Um, yeah, he didn't beat me with that Raticate. Raticate would have gone down to this. So I think you'll see here um, that actually... Is, is this his last thing? Yes. Uh, okay. So we'll just go for Elite Slife here. 
and it it will do about 30 percent yeah see he could have just stayed in there this was a, a sack the entire time the first time i switched into this just to get some damage on slowbro and um, psychic and now i actually probably live another one and um just because of that recovery so i get to go for another leech life so that turned out really differently to how i expected kabutops was a last minute idea and it turned out to work out really well um, probably because he brought a team that I didn't really expect so I didn't think that Kabutops would be in a position to do this much damage um, but yeah you see there I, I kind of understand now why he didn't want to uh, keep Slowbro in because now it's really low and so if he had just let it take all that damage then it wouldn't have been great for him but yeah that, that drill run miss was pretty important because it just it just sped everything up quite a lot I mean if, if he had hit there then I, I guess I could have gone into my um, Mega Aerodactyl to threaten out the uh, the Thero but he still had a, a healthy slow bro and a full health um, Alola Matake. I, I think I was still in a very good position but that drill run miss uh, it just meant that Kabutops went in it really did so that's this week's battle and it was a pretty gross one actually. I, I feel a bit bad about that one. I, it, it definitely was a lot of luck. I, I enjoyed Kabutops doing stuff. I think it's got a really cool move pool and it was one of my later draft picks so I'm so glad that it can do things. Um, but it, it really it shouldn't have been able to do that much. But it means that we're in a great position for next week. We're 2-0 up and with a very strong differential in that match. Um, the Mr. Mime was a really good idea. Toxicking the Snorlax on the Slowbro switching and then subbing down with Mr. Mime was such a good idea. I had a similar idea with my Toxic Protect shenanigans. Um, but anyway, that's all. Thank you so much, Nate, for the battle. Definitely go and check out his channel and his side of things to see what his uh, mindset was and why he brought the things that he did. But that's going to be all. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.